Hey, we're back. This time we're taking a look at the Month 3 OP prize ship for the classic movie storyline OP, The Voyage Home. This time around it is the HMS Bounty. It's the Federation's confiscated Klingon uh, bird of prey. And uh, we'll get right in and take a look. So here we have our maneuver card. It's a standard Burrell, even Klingon faction up here. And uh, the generic version of the ship's Klingon as well. But standard movement on those. Do love that three come about on there. It is red, as most come about are. But other than that, they're pretty standard maneuvering there. Here we have our named HMS Bounty. That one is Federation faction. Four attack, one agility, three hull, three shield. One weapon upgrade, four crew upgrades. Always love those crew upgrades on Federation ships. 22 points. Evasive target lock cloak and sensor echo for your action bar. And the ability is, if there's only Federation cards assigned to the ship, add scan and battle station icons to the action bar. The ship cannot be in the same fleet as Krug's Bird of Prey. I'm going to take heat because I always say his name wrong, but oh well. Anyway, it's still a, a pretty nice ship. Aside from some high-cost upgrades, it's the only cloaking Federation ship. There's a cloaking device that came with the Defiant and one that came with the Pegasus, I think. But they're a little overpriced, so this one's the first one that's built right into the cost. Not a bad ship overall, either. Then we have our generic Klingon Burrell class. You lose one shield. You lose quite a bit on here. You only get one weapon, two crew upgrades for 20 points. For captain upgrades, we get James D. Kirk. Captain skill 8, one elite talent for 5 points. All your Federation crew upgrades cost minus 1 point. When one of your crew upgrades is supposed to be disabled, you can place 3 time tokens on the upgrade instead. Both of those are pretty cool abilities. I don't know if they are better than some of the previous versions of Kirk, but I do like both of those. They are playable, and with the Captain Skill of 8, I think overall he's pretty pretty playable, especially with Federation reducing those uh, SP costs of your crew members. Most Federation builds run pretty crew-heavy, so that's going to save you points. Being able to time lock your guys with time tokens instead of disabling them really allows you to pull off some of those big crew-heavy combos without having to spend turns undisabling everything to reactivate it and get it all set up again. Then we have our generic Federation Captain. Captain skill of 1 for 0 points. For crew upgrades, we have Pavel Chekhov. 4 points. At the end of the activation phase, you may disable this card and place an auxiliary power token beside your ship to flip up to 2 of your disabled shield tokens from the red back to the blue side. This would come in really handy in the event that you actually win this ship from where the pro reduced the ability to flip disabled shields back up or lowered how many you could. He gives you the option to do that. Would definitely have come in handy for that, but of course you have to play that event to win this ship. So Next we have Ahura. Five points. At the start of the combat phase, you may discard this card and target all opposing ships within range one of your ship. Each target ship must either discard a token, evasive, scan, or battle stations that's beside it, or place an auxiliary power token beside it. Now they do get to choose which, but uh, either way, you're either giving them an auxiliary power, which means they're going to be predictable probably and pull a green maneuver next turn to get rid of it, or you're going to take away whatever token they had that they were planning on using this turn. So, very nice. Next, we have a new version of Scotty. For four points. Add one upgrade slot to your upgrade bar, either tech or weapons. At any time, you may disable this card to remove an auxiliary power token from beside your ship. He combos pretty good with checkoff. He gives you that auxiliary power token. You can use him to remove it. Lots of other reasons you'd want to remove an auxiliary power token, but definitely an interesting ability. The adding the extra slot on there is kind of nice. The only downside is he doesn't do any kind of repairs which the other Scotties do, and I always tend to like them better. So I think you'd end up going with one of those versions. And last we have Sulu for three points. If you execute a red maneuver, you may disable this card instead of placing an auxiliary power token beside your ship. 
very nice, especially on the Bird of Prey here. We can pull that red three come about. You can uh, disable Sulu and make that come about basically a white maneuver, which is really, really scary. For the rest of the pack here, we have our additional rules card that talks about time tokens. There's this Captain Kirk that comes with this expansion. Let's you put three of these time tokens on a crew member instead of disabling them. The expansion only comes with two, though. It's kind of funny. Those are the only real tokens you get with this expansion. Then we have our uh, maneuver dial. And then we have our tokens for our captain as well as our other half of our maneuver dial. And there's our generic captain token as well as our ship base. 90 degree front and rear arcs which are nice. And federation on this side. 90 degree front and rear on the generic side and Klingon faction on there. Overall it's a neat little pack. I do like the... Um, Bird of Praise, they're pretty neat little ships, they're pretty durable, they have the cloak, they do a decent amount of damage. As I said earlier, this is pretty much the only cloaking ship the Federation has without using extra tech that costs extra points. It's built right in the cost, so there's that too. And a lot of the crew members have ways to skirt around auxiliary power tokens or other things like that. Combo well with some of the uh, other upgrades and other packs that we have out there. So... Overall, it's a pretty cool ship. Definitely worth trying to get your hands on if you're a Federation player. And that about wraps it up for uh, the overview of the HMS Bounty here. I still wish these came with actual models. It's kind of annoying they don't. But at the same time, most people who have been playing for a while have a ton of extras, so it's not that big of a deal. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. Check out my other videos, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.